let's see what happens if we run chat GPT and we try to um, ask if he knows what Grasshopper 3D is. So if we go to GPT 3 or 4, we can just write something like, do you know what is Grasshopper 3D? And we get a kind of general answer. Yes, Grasshopper 3D is a visual programming language and environment that is integrated into the 3D modeling software Rhinoceros. It allows users to create complex parametric designs and generative art by connecting different components and algorithms in a graphical interface. So ChatGPT knows that Grasshopper is a graphic, uh, it provides a graphic interface to create algorithms rather than, you know, script uh, codes uh, in a traditional way. Grasshopper has become popular among architects, designers, etc. And it is often used in a conjunction with other software such as Autodesk, Revit, SketchUp and Unity uh, to create detailed 3D models and immersive experiences. This is probably not 100% true, but is a reasonable um, description of what Grasshopper does. Uh, the next step is probably about, uh, and I actually asked, are you able to create Grasshopper algorithms using components? Uh, Grasshopper, uh, as you probably know very well, uh, has a visual, as I said, uh, interface allowing user to create algorithms using components. They are like graphic elements that can be connected together. So the answer from uh, GPT is that as an AI language model, I don't have the capability to directly create algorithms or manipulate software interfaces like Grasshopper. However, I can certainly assist you in understanding the concept and principle behind Grasshopper. I mean, there are so many people out there that they are asking me why I don't publish the, a second book about Grasshopper, AAD2. Uh, probably because, um, I mean, now we can use a, chat, a chatbot like GPT-4 as an instructor, as someone that can assist them in understanding how a tool like Grasshopper works. And in, indeed, if you see that the last sentence is, if you have any specific questions or problems related to Grasshopper, feel free to ask and I'll do my best to help you out. Now, if we run Grasshopper, and we, if we want to create, uh, you know, a basic algorithm, the, the thing that you are seeing in the script, on the screen right now is a basic exercises, is a basic exercise about uh, um, using the so-called image sampling, meaning that you can start with a set of points, maybe you put uh, circles on top of that, and then you use um, an image and the image brightness in order to control for example, the dimension of uh, circles that we are going to put on each uh, at each point. Now, Grasshopper works with uh, these visual elements, components, and also uh, parameters. The gray boxes they expresses they express function like dividing surfaces into points, uh, uploading images, creating circles, and then we have those small uh, parameters to control num to control numeric values uh, dimension of the original grids we can change the um, maybe the radius of each circle and then using uh, properly and this is about you know teaching and learning how to connect properly the different elements together for example we can create a simple script an image sampler generation without any line of code now let's try to do or let's try to ask gpt to do the same thing i mean if we are um if we don't know how grasshopper works let's try to ask gpt can you create in grasshopper python a circle pattern variable radius starting from an image grasshopper has the possibility to use python inside the specific component. So if you are able, if you know uh, Python language, but also C Sharp or uh, Visual Basic, for example, uh, you can create codes inside a specific component and then it can be part of the Grasshopper workflow. So as you see, um, 
I ask to create a Grasshopper Python component in order to create an image sampler. And so you can see here the uh, output from ChatGPT. Yes, it is possible to create a circle pattern with variable ready in Grasshopper using Python. Here is an example script that reads an image file and creates a circle pattern based on the image's color values. This is exactly what we want. So we can copy the code. So we come back to the Grasshopper interface, getting rid of all the stuff that is on the Grasshopper canvas and just putting the Python component. Double click. So this is the Grasshopper Python editor. We can delete the text, the code that you can see here, and paste the one coming from ChatGPT. Now, the first important thing that you can see is that every com uh, Grasshopper component has input and output. Python script has a A output, and as you can see, ChatGPT created a Python script which is specifically written for Grasshopper. That's why you can see this A equal as the last line. So something that we have to do now is like replacing a part. This is not debugging. This is just, you know, manipulation of code. We can use the X parameter in order to create the path file separately here. We can connect it to the X input of the Grasshopper Python, and then we can upload the image like that. So double click again, and we can test if this script works or not. So we get uh, an error, line 21, if I remember, yes. So the great things about ChatGPT is that it can create or perform a debugging. So this line of the code doesn't work in Grasshopper, so we can come back to ChatGPT and we can say, this line in the script seems not working. And so I just paste radius equal and etc. And so we get a very polite message from ChatGPT, which is, I apologize for the confusion. The remap to range function should work in Rhino and Grasshopper, but it looks like it may not be available in the specific version of Rhino Common, etc. In other words, uh, uh, it uses, um, it used actually um, function which is not in the Grasshopper Python library. So GPT creates a new code that should fix the problem. And then let's try copy code. Then I come back to um, Grasshopper Python. We paste the updated code and then uh, I replace that line using X, which means that the, uh, the, the Python code now read the file path. And here we go. It looks like a mess, but actually now we can, the, the, the script works fine. We just have to play with the parameters right now. So we have a, a session where you can see define circle parameters, and then we can just play with parameters like the minimum radius, the maximum one, brightness if you like, and then you can directly see the effect on the um, Rhino environment. For, for some reason, the, the image is like rotated. It depends on the UV control of the script, but nothing serious actually. And then of course, um, the, the, the nice part is, is even if you don't know Python that well, or if you don't know how to use Python, it's very intuitive how to play with parameters because the way GPT creates the code is very well organized into session and you have the precise description of each part of the script. Then we can bake the output of the script and then we can rotate it. And then we got the same result of, you know, the standard way to create algorithms in Grasshopper. That's very brilliant again because it's um, 
we can use GPT as a tutor in order to learn new stuff. I mean, that's a way to learn how to code in Python maybe, or it's just a way to speed up some process. For example, here, another example, can you create a Grasshopper Python again, a script that output a point grid forming a diamond pattern using curves? So here the script, as you can see, a equal to curves as the last line. So again, this is a Python script specifically created for Grasshopper. Copy and paste again. I mean, this is not rocket science, creating a uh, diamond pattern in Grasshopper. This is something that can be easily done also in uh, using plugin, but again, just a simple script, test, And here we go. This is the output. This is not static. We can play with parameters inside, right inside the, the script, playing with rows and columns here, spacing. We can change the angle. And again, also, if you don't have any knowledge of Python, it's very easy to interact with the script. And you know, something very interesting that we'll, we will probably have in a few weeks, uh, it will be the, the, the possibility to use an image as a reference for, this is something that we saw before, uh, you know, the napkin sketch translated into a uh, proper, into a very uh, website. We will be probably able to provide JetGPT with an image of a pattern, and then we can probably get, uh, get a, a code from that. Here, for example, the use of a um, mathematical survey, mathematical equation. You can uh, generate mathematical equation from uh, GPT. You put it inside Grasshopper. And again, playing with parameters, you can manipulate the, 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 the code and then the, the output geometry. Something that will be way more complicated to be done, like manually. And then again, Python script can be just a part of a more complex code. As you can see here, we used uh, uh, another plugin, which is called Dendro, in order to create a voxelization. So you start from uh, uh, simple curves and then you thicken them in order to, to have a precise three-dimensional geometry, as you can see here. And that's something that you can create in a few seconds, you know? And finally, this is a, um, a test uh, um, about GPT-4 that I, I made a couple of days ago, which is about, uh, for example, creating a Voronoi diagram in Grasshopper using not Python, you know, but by describing the process. Uh, this is really incredible because you can see a set of precise steps in order to get a specific geometric output using components. Now, if you really analyze the text, for example, you can see that here, create a rectangular boundary using the rectangle component found under vector plane. This is not true. I mean, sometimes it makes this kind of mistake. So the position of uh, components inside category and subcategories is not correct sometimes. But if you follow exactly this very process, you will get the right results, as you can see in a few seconds. So again, we have a coding capability, we have a debugging cap capability, and also uh, this kind of tutoring step-by-step, -step, which is great.